Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a wind tunnel effect. I'll throw some examples up on the screen for those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, one of the first things I'm gonna do is just add a sphere to my scene. This is what we'll be making the smoke travel around and then I'll show you a couple of examples of other objects. So first of all, we need an object to have our smoke flow around, so we have our sphere. The next thing I'm gonna add, and this is just to keep things simple, is a cube. I'm gonna go ahead and move it on our Y axis, scale it down, maybe to about there or so. Tab into edit mode, shift D, Z to lock to the Z axis. I'm gonna shift it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna click shift R to repeat that action a couple of times. I only want four cubes for now. I'm gonna scale these down and try to center them as follows. So these cubes will be what emit the smoke, and then the sphere will be affected by the smoke. So the very first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna add in a, another cube. I'm gonna scale it up, I'm gonna make sure that it's surrounding everything. I'll just go into ghost mode, x-ray mode real quick. All right, it's surrounding everything. This is gonna be our domain. We're gonna to go to our physics tab. We're gonna add in a, so that here, fluid domain. We're gonna change the type to gas and we are good to go. Next thing is to click on our cubes. Now again, these cubes are gonna be what's actually emitting the smoke. So I'm gonna add in a fluid and I'm gonna add in a flow. Type is going to be smoke. We're gonna do inflow instead of geometry. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and turn my gravity off. And this will make sense in a second. So now we have a smoke simulation. If we press play, the smoke should just do nothing because we haven't set anything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this the quickest save ever. I'm gonna go ahead and use my naming system where I just type random letters. Now, what we wanna do before we uh, simulate our smoke is we wanna actually add in a force field. We wanna add in a wind force field. And I'm gonna rotate that on the X axis, like follows, oops. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees, typed in the wrong number. I am going to bring it back here. And now this wind will carry our smoke through our scene here. Now it doesn't matter if the wind is outside of the domain or not, at least it's never mattered for me. I'm gonna move it inside just in case. Um, every now and then you have to have things inside the domain. As long as your smoke and your object are in the domain, you should be good. For the wind, I'm just gonna set that to three for the strength. Flow, you can keep that at one. Now this is a big experiment, so you're gonna have to do a lot of experimenting to get the proper result. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on my sphere. I'm gonna add in a fluid property. I'm gonna call this an effector. And then I'll just go ahead and set the surface thickness to 0.2 or something like that, give it a quick save. And let's go ahead and simulate this, all right? On the right hand side, all of these settings are super important. For those watching on Instagram, check this out. Right now, our resolution at the top is 32. That's super important. That's basically the quality of the smoke simulation. I'll leave it there just for now before I do a quick bake. The way that I like to do things is I'll bake with a very low resolution first just to see if everything's working correctly. And then I'll do the real bake later with a higher resolution. For the gas buoyancy, I'm gonna keep the heat and the buoyancy at zero. I don't really need those. And then I'll just bake out to frame 100. I will go ahead and switch the type to all. And then I will click on, uh, I'm gonna actually also adjust my frames from one to 100, go back to my domain properties and bake. Now it's gonna be a very quick bake. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make sure the wind is affecting our smoke. It is. So everything's working properly. And now what we can do is we can raise the resolution. So you can see our smoke is being affected by the wind and it's hitting our sphere. So we know everything's working properly. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my domain. I'm going to click free all to reset the bake. Scroll all the way up to resolution. And let's try something like 150 and let's see what we get. Now, a little pro tip here. If you zoom into the corner, you'll see this little cube. That is actually the size of the particles being simulated. So if you're ever curious and something's not working properly, take a look at that size particle and make sure everything in your scene is set up. For example, if these cubes are smaller than that particle, you won't be able to bake it because you just don't have a high enough resolution. All right, let's go ahead and bake this out and let's see what we get. Now, depending on the type of computer you have, it may take longer. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set up some lighting too once we get a decent result here. So right now I'm running a 3070. So as you can see, it's whizzing on by. Um, now, this is still considered a low resolution, although it is at, what did I say, 150? That's pretty, that's pretty high for most people, but even for me, though, it's low because you're not really going to get the results that you're looking for. All right, let's see, let's see what kind of results we get here. All right, this is more like what I'm looking for here. So if I go to my side view, which is typically what you're going to have, back this up, 
you'll see our smoke comes out and it flows around our object. And that is basically the essence of your wind tunnel. And that's pretty much all you need to know. The only thing that you're going to want to change is the size of these cubes and the size of your actual particles. So right now, everything's properly set up. I'm gonna play this back in real time so you can see it. You can see that we have a nice flow of smoke over top. We're running about nine frames a second, so it's not perfectly real time here, but this looks really, really good. Now I'm gonna quickly show you what would happen if we set up some awesome lighting on our scene. I'm gonna to go to my rendered view, and I am gonna make sure I'm on cycles, which I am. I am going to make my world color black, all right, and I'm going to go ahead and add in a light source. I'll just add in an area light. I'll move this off to the left here. R, Y, 90. Whoops. Make sure it's pointing the right way. That works. Now, this light source is going to basically um, show our smoke. So let me just make sure everything's working. Every now and then, for whatever reason, the smoke won't show up. Sorry about that, guys. So it's been a while since I've recorded the tutorial. So what you have to do is click on your domain. And make sure you have this node set up here. You're going to add a principled volume. The density you can play with, you can make it whatever value you want. I'll just make it 10 so you can really see that smoke. And then what you're going to do is click on your area light. All right. And I'm going to give that a power of 500. Where we go? 500. And now you can really, really see the smoke. So this is where you can kind of come in here and you can actually start adding in more details. So in rendered view, I'm going to set up a camera too. You can actually come back here and now you can start to um, make those cubes smaller and you can have a higher level of detail. So let me go ahead and do that and I'm going to rebake and also set up a camera. I'm going to go to add camera and camera. I'm going to go ahead to my top view. I'm just going to make sure everything is reset to zero. I always just reset everything to zero. I don't know why. It's just what I do. I'll do 90 and 90 and we're good to go. Snap to that camera. I'm just going to go ahead and back that camera up as well. One thing you can do is set this to orthographic and you'll get a really, really nice effect here. And you can see that this smoke looks really awesome. However, I want the smoke to be even more detailed. So what I am going to do is I'm going to click on my cubes here. Well, actually first click on my domain, get rid of this bake. I'm going to click on free all. I'm going to go back to my cubes, tab into edit mode, select everything, make them smaller. All right. And I'm also going to duplicate them. I want to have uh, dual smoke lines here. So now we're going to have, what is that, eight? Yep, we'll have eight smoke lines. And you can see how small this cube is. We should be able to get a little bit more detail now. I'm actually going to delete everything. I changed my mind. I'm going to space these out a little bit further. Two, three, four. That should be fine. All right, that's what I want. All right, so wherever these cubes are is where the smoke's going to be emitted. And then I'm going to go ahead and raise this um, resolution up to 300. I'm going to bake and we're going to come right back after I'm done. All right, guys. So this bake is taking absolutely forever, but I did pause it at frame 44 because I wanted to show you guys the detail level that you'll be getting. Again, this is, what did I choose? 300 resolution. So if you look here, you can see just how this smoke is impacting the surface. And this is a low poly object. Imagine what this would look like with a higher poly object. Um, I'll go ahead and play it up to frame 40 on loop for you guys so you can see. Here we go. Again, here's the smoke. It's about to intercept the sphere here. And you can kind of see as it does, it just starts to wrap around the sphere. And this is what this is where the experimentation comes in. Before I made this tutorial, no joke, I probably was messing around with this simulation for, I'm not even kidding you guys, like eight hours, like on and off each day. Like I would spend a couple of hours trying to perfect this. To be honest, there is no one size fits all for any object. You have to experiment with it to get the result that you're looking for. The higher the resolution, the better the result is going to be. Sometimes if the wind is too high, it messes up the smoke. Sometimes if it's too low, it barely pushes the smoke. Um, another thing to consider is the temperature of the smoke, the color. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this in render view so you guys can get an idea of like what this is actually going to look like. Let me snap to my camera, switch to render view. Again, um, when we get to this end frame here, you can just see how amazing this is going to come out. And don't forget, you can hide these cubes as well, or you can cut them off in the shot. But you can get some incredible results with 
pretty much minimal effort. I mean, most of this tutorial is just me blabbing on. Um, I just want to show you, you can also change the color of the smoke. If we click on our domain, I think is right here. You can also, you should probably label your domain. I can switch this smoke to blue. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, here it is. That's it. Am I tripping? Where is the smoke? Color attribute, density. It should be changing. I don't know why it's not. You can change color of the smoke. I'm not sure why it's not actively changing right now, but I don't really feel like spending too much uh, L other time on this tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I will be posting like a result video of what this does look like, but the bakes take incredibly long. Really all you need guys, and I'll just go over it one more time, is gonna be these cubes that are gonna emit the smoke, the object that you want the smoke to wrap around, the domain, and wind. That's really all you need. In fact, you don't even need to set your gravity to zero. I just did it so there's no external influence on the smoke. Um, I like to make sure everything is completely controlled. But this is more or less how you do it. If you wanted to, you could do a solid stream of smoke. You could do a giant column that emits a column of smoke. There's literally so many ways you can set this up. Um, the domain will always be some sort of rectangular prism. These objects right here, they can be whatever you want. So your actual emission of your smoke can be any object you want it to be. That's kind of the beauty of Blender is there's really no limits except for the domain itself. I don't know why they haven't made it possible to have a domain that's a different like shape, but you can put effectors in here and flip the normals and you could probably do something like that. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with these smoke simulations, but again, this is the result that you're gonna get. You can see the smoke wrapping around our object here. The higher the resolution, the greater effect you're going to get for your wind tunnel simulation. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry if I've been blabbing on, but I try to include as much detail as possible. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys need any help with this. There's a lot of different steps here, but to be honest, it's not too hard. You only need like three or four different things in your scene. Um, and again, you need some patience to go ahead and actually bake out that simulation. So let me know if you guys need help message me. I will message you back eventually. I'm a pretty busy person most of the time, so I'll try to get back to you when I can. But yeah, have a great day, guys. I will see you later.